Alright guys, this is John from AdSense Flippers, and I am back. This is part two of the HostGator setup. So let's get into HostGator and, uh, and get going. Now let's go ahead and open up FileZilla. Okay, again, all of the information you need to connect to your server will have been sent to you in an email from HostGator. So I've just put that into a notepad document and I can use this to log into my server from FileZilla. We need our IP, our username, and our password. And we'll connect. Cool. So when you added your domain to HostGator, it automatically built a subfolder for you, and that will be the name of your actual domain. So in order to find that, all we're going to do is just go into the public HTML folder and look for our domain. All right, let's see here. And we're going to go ahead and look for the folder directory we just added. Ah, there it is. Okay, now we're ready to upload our WordPress file. So we're just going to go over here and grab our WordPress zip file off the desktop, bring it over, and drop it in. And this will take just a minute to upload. So what's nice about this is if you have a lot of domains that you need to upload your WordPress zip file to, you can just scroll through each one of these folders, drag it over, scroll down, go in, drag it over, and you can do a lot at a time very quickly. It's much faster than doing things through the actual cPanel. Okay, now let's go back to our HostGator cPanel. And we're going to scroll down to File Manager and go. And we're going to go over to Public HTML and scroll down to find our domain. Here it is. And here's our WordPress file that we just uploaded. So we need to unpack this. So go ahead and select it and go to Extract. All right, and all our files are in this WordPress folder, but we need to move them back to this folder that we're in right now. So we're going to open this up. We're going to select all, and go to move file. We're going to get rid of the WordPress folder and hit move files. And now we go back to our main directory, and here they all are. So now we can just go ahead and delete this WordPress folder because it's empty. Okay, it's time to get WordPress linked to our database. All right, we're going to scroll down to wp-config-sample, and we're going to rename this file. We're going to take out the sample part. So it should be wp-config config.php. It stands for configuration. Rename file. Scroll back down. And we're going to open this file up and edit it. So now we're going to go back where we stored our information about our database in our notepad file. We're going to go back and input this information into the WordPress configuration file. Start with the user. Copy it.
and user. Make sure you don't get rid of the little quotes in here. We want to keep those. Paste. And database name. Go back. Copy. Paste. Throw our password in here. Copy, paste, and we can leave host to set to localhost. We'll hit save changes. And we should be able to minimize this. Okay, so we're going to pull up our web browser and actually type in our domain. And we're going to add backslash wp-admin backslash install.php. Now one of two things will happen here. Basically you'll get the correct page, which is the WordPress install page, which we got. Or you'll get some sort of error that there's a database error. If you get an error, that means you probably made a mistake when you entered in the information into the wp-configuration file that we just did. So you just go back and check that and make sure everything's correct, and that should sort out your problem. Uh, we're pretty much ready to go now. This is the WordPress page that we start with uh, to get our blog set up, and uh, we'll fill out this information and be good to go.